everyone hope you guys are doing well so in this video as you can see that we're gonna learn the concept of completing the square now this is a concept that's very common okay um it's common in o level math igcsc math as math add maths so it's very important when you have quadratic equations wherever you have quadratic equations you will find this concept okay and make sure that you understand this concept well and do as many practice questions as you can and focus on the understanding part rather than the memorizing part so that no matter what the question looks like you can solve it without any difficulty okay now let's talk about quadratic equations first so there are three forms in which a quadratic equation can be written so this is the general form the form that we are most used to this is what we call the factorized form this is what we call the factorized form now every form has its own benefits okay like it has its own pros and cons like for example the general form is something that you would need if let's say you have to use the quadratic formula so you can see the values of a b and c clearly okay general form or maybe if let's say you're doing middle term breaking so before you do middle term breaking you would you would like to see the equation like this so you can decide you know do a bit of trial and error and see how to break the middle term and then there is the completed square form okay now the completed square form is particularly useful if you have to find out the turning point. Okay, so TP is short for turning point. So in the completed square form, you have H comma K as the coordinates of the turning point. So all we do is once we have turned a quadratic equation into a completed square form, we change the sign of H. So for example, if let's say you have X minus two, so the X coordinate of the turning point will be two and let's say you have plus three so the y coordinate of the turning point k is going to be taken as it is so to keep it short and simple you change the sign of the x coordinate and the y coordinate you take it as it is okay now when we do examples you'll further understand what exactly it is that i'm trying to say over here and the factorized form is basically useful if let's say you want to find out the x intercepts okay and the general form like i said is useful if let's say you want to use the quadratic formula okay or if you want to do middle term breaking okay and by the way, you can always expand and simplify any uh, remaining of the two forms and bring it equal to the general form. All you have to do is, like I said, open up the bracket, simplify all the terms, and there you have it. You will have your equation in its general form. Okay. Now, before we dive into completed square form, there are a few things that I'd like you to understand. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand a few brackets using the identity, the first or the second identity, which is A plus b the whole thing square here's the first identity this is a square plus 2ab plus b square okay and then you have a minus b the whole thing square which is a square minus 2ab plus b square okay and we're not going to use the third identity over here okay just these two so let's say that you have to expand x plus 2 the whole thing square okay now i'm going to deliberately write it in a way because i want you to try and pick up a pattern over here so if you expand x plus 2 the whole thing square it's going to be x square plus 4x because 2 into x into 2 is 4x and then in the end you would have 4 which i'm not going to write as 4 instead i'm going to write it as 2 square why because like i said i want you to pick up a pattern over here now let's try something else let's say that you have x minus 3 the whole thing square so we have x square plus sorry not plus x square minus 6x plus 3 squared okay now to help you out with the pattern part so what i want you to do is i want you to observe the coefficient of x and the term that we're squaring okay now i'm going to do one more example let's say that you have to do x plus 5 the whole thing squared so here you're going to have x square plus 10x and in the end you will have plus 5 square okay so do you see a pattern over here that the term that we're squaring is always half of the coefficient of x okay so the term that we have at the very end is always the square of half of the coefficient of x so for example if you have four here we have two square here if you have six here you have three squared here okay ignoring the minus six for now if you have 10 here you have five the square of five over here okay and what decides the sign in between it's always the sign that you have before you expand it so for example if it's x minus three the whole thing squared it's going to be x squared minus six x the middle term will always be negative no matter what if the sign is positive between the two terms then all the terms are going to be positive okay just as this identity suggests over here okay now with this in mind let's do a few examples okay i'm going to do around four to five examples so that you get the hang of how completed square is done okay so here's one example it's fairly easy 
So here's what we are going to do. The first thing you want to do is you just want to rewrite everything as it is, except that you leave a bit of space. So for example, we have x squared plus 6x. So I'm going to leave a, leave a bit of space and then I'm going to write plus 5. Now, why have I left this space? I've left this space so I can add something to complete the square, okay? And notice over here, when we expanded x minus 3, the whole thing square. Now, suppose if this was x plus 3, the whole thing square. In that case, we would have gotten x square plus 6x plus 3 square. So what is it that completes the square? It's this 3 square, okay? How did... How do we know that it's going to be 3 squared? Because this 3, as you can see, is half of the coefficient of x. So that means here we have a situation where we have x squared plus 6x. And now we're thinking, what is it that we can add to complete the square? Okay, so for that, we look at the coefficient of x, which is 6. Now, what's half of 6? That's 3. So that means we're going to add the square of 3. Now, if I've added the square of 3, that means the same value that I've added, I'm going to subtract as well. Why are we doing this? Because this is an expression. It's an equation, actually, because there's an equals to sign. And if, let's say, you've added something on the same side of the equation, now, in order to make sure that there is balance in the equation and you don't end up changing the actual values, whatever it is that you've added, you're going to subtract that as well. Okay, it's like, normally, we would do this on both sides of the equals to sign. You know how, let's say, if you have 2x equals to 8. Now, if you divide the left-hand side by 2, you divide the right-hand side by 2 as well. But because we're doing the same, because we're doing this on the same side of the equals to sign, so if you've added something, we're going to subtract the same thing as well. Okay? Now, so what happens next is that this part of the expression, x squared plus 6x plus 3 squared, will compress and become x plus 3, the whole thing square. Okay? And if you simplify this, this means 5 minus 9. Now remember, this is not minus 3 whole squared. It's just minus 3 squared. It's minus the square of 3, which means 5 minus 9, which is equal to what? Which is equal to minus 4. And there you have it. That's it. You now have this expression in completed square form. And now what we can do is we can determine the coordinates of the turning point. All you have to do is compare it with this. y equals to a x minus h, the whole thing, square plus k. Now you can see that minus h equals to plus 3. That means h is going to be equal to minus 3. Like I said earlier, you just change the sign of the x coordinate. Okay, and the y coordinate, you take it as it is because it's k that's equal to minus 4. And a is something that we will learn later, uh, not in this video, in the next video, that a decides basically what type of curve we're going to draw. Whether it's going to be a minimum curve, which we call a happy face, or whether it's going to be a maximum curve, which we call a sad face. Okay, now... Here's another question, okay? And this is the this is how every completed square form question will be done, okay? Now, there are there are a few exceptions, okay, which we'll see later on in the examples. So, let's say that you have x square plus 5x. Now, first step, like I mentioned earlier, you write everything as it is, you leave a bit of space, and then you write the plus 3. Now, what is it that I'm going to add to complete the square? I'm going to add the square of 2.5. Now, how did I get this 2.5? 2.5, as you can see, is the... 2.5 is half of the coefficient of x. So the coefficient of x is 5. Half of that would be 2.5, okay? And now that I've added something, I can't leave it at that because that means I've changed the entire equation. I need to subtract the exact same thing. So minus 2.5 squared. So this part of the expression now compresses and becomes x plus 2.5, the whole thing square, okay? And this is something that you can evaluate using your calculator. So 3 minus 2.5 squared. So that's equal to minus 3.25, or you can write it in fraction as well. It's entirely up to you. So minus 3.25. Now let's write down the coordinates of the turning point. So the coordinates of the turning point are going to be minus 2.5, comma, minus 3.25. Okay, and there you go. Okay, now here's another question. So you have y equals to 2x squared plus 8x plus 10. And immediately you can see that this question is slightly different. Why? Because here the coefficient of x squared is 2. Now, before you do completed square form, remember one thing. You always have to make the coefficient of x squared equal to 1. If it's not equal to 1, that means you can't do completing square. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 2 common, okay, and we're going to write x squared plus 8x, sorry, not plus 8x, because we've taken 2 common, plus 5x plus 5. Okay, now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to leave a bit of space so that we can add something and we can subtract the exact same thing. So I'm going to leave a bit of space after 4x. 
I'm going to write plus five, leave a bit of space, close the bracket. Okay. Now with practice, you don't have to basically divide this into two steps. You can do this in one single step as well. Okay. Now what is it that I'm going to add over here to complete the square? I'm going to add the square of two. Now if I've added the square of two, that means I'm going to subtract the square of two as well. Okay. Now why two? Because as you can see, two is half of the coefficient of x, which is four. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to X, uh, compress this part of the expression into x plus 2, the whole thing square. Okay, and this part of the expression will be 5 minus 4, which is equal to minus 1. Except that this is not the final answer. Okay, why? Because remember that there is a 2 waiting outside, which you need to multiply. So multiplying 2 with both the expression means 2 bracket x plus 2 whole squared, and the same 2 will also be multiplied by this minus 1. So we have minus two, okay? Now this two will just wait around here, okay? It's not gonna get multiplied by x plus two, the whole thing squared, because that means expanding it all over again and multiplying it, which would take us back to square one. That's not what the objective is. So we leave it as it is. Now the coordinates of the turning point will be minus two comma minus two. And there you go, you have it. This is the completed square form. Okay, now here's one more example. And in this, you can clearly see that we have minus x squared, okay? So first things first, like I said, you have to make sure that the coefficient of x squared is one. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take minus one common. The second you do that, you the coefficients will, the sign of uh, the terms will change. So plus three x will become minus three x, plus four will become minus four. Now, once you've done that, the next step is to obviously leave a bit of space. So you have x squared minus, it's minus three x. Okay, and then you leave a bit of space, you write minus four, you close the bracket. Now, what is it that you're going to add over here to complete the square? You're going to add the square of half of three. That means plus 1.5. And that also means that you're going to subtract 1.5 squared as well. Okay. Now, this part of the expression will compress and become x minus 1.5. Now, you may be thinking, all of a sudden, we have a minus sign, okay, which we didn't have in any of the previous examples above. So who decides what the sign is going to be in between? So if you go back, like I said earlier, it is the coefficient of x that decides what the sign is going to be in between. So for example, here you can see that we have minus, that's why we have x minus three, the whole thing squared. So here also you can see that we have minus three x, so that means it's going to be x minus 1.5, the whole thing squared. Okay, now as far as minus four minus 1.5 squared is concerned, it's best that you use a calculator over here. So that's minus 6.25, except that this is not the final answer. Why? Because you have a minus one that's waiting outside. So minus one gets multiplied by x minus 1.5, the whole thing squared. And the same minus one gets multiplied by minus 6.25, which makes it positive 6.25. And there you have it. This is your final answer. And if let's say you want to write down the coordinates of the turning point, so that's going to be 1.5 comma 6.25. So you can see that the sign of the x coordinate has changed from negative to positive. Y coordinate remains the same. Okay, and there you go, that's it. This is how completed square form is done. And I hope you've understood this. If you have, do let me know in the comment section and don't forget to, well, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also like this video and share it with your friends and classmates and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. So that's it, I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care, bye-bye.